This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusica.com. Hi, this is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Hut's Entertainment Report podcast. And tonight, let me tell you, we got the man that does it like no one else. This man here has been in the business top tier for at least 29 years. You know who we have in the building? We have, starting from scratch in the building tonight. What's good, my brother? Oh, that was a fantastic intro. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I got to get the recording of that thing. Play it <laughs> like Spec says. He plays all those intros. I'm going to play that one every time. Yeah. Okay, yes. Um, yes. We could go back and record. I could give you a deeper there voice you if you need. We'll do it. We'll do it. And up. I mean, thank what up? you. What up? What up? Thank you so very much for coming through the podcast because you've been one of the most requested DJs that people's been asking to speak to. You know what I mean? That's good. I'm yeah. happy to be here. Yeah, definitely. Every DJ I spoke to, when you ask them who is some of your favorites, you're the first name that comes up. You know what I mean? My checks have been clearing, I see. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they have. You know what I mean? I like your vibe, your energy and stuff because a lot of people don't know because 95% of the times when you're in a dance, you would never hear Scratch talk on a mic. Mm. I think I've known you for over 20 years. I've probably seen you talk on a mic for probably three times. And yeah. that's a stretch. Yeah. And I mean, that's vodka. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. So let's go from the beginning because I know you're originally, you're not even from Toronto. No. You're from Montreal. All right. So walk us through how you're the transition from Toronto to Montreal and into becoming a DJ. Um, I was in Montreal from till I was 14. I moved to Toronto when I was 14 because my mom got a job up here. My mom used to work for uh, Warner Brothers Records. Okay. So back when it was we, it was Warner Brothers Electra Atlantic. Yeah. So, yeah, and then she transferred up here because um, of her the husband was going to be her husband at that time. Mm-hmm. So we came up here. Um, it was tough. I mean, 14, I was in grade, I did my grade nine in Montreal and came here for grade Ooh, 10. Yeah. You know what I mean? Didn't know anybody, but it was cool. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I, went to t- I went straight to T.L. Kennedy in Mississauga. Okay. And, um, yeah, it was, it was just, everything was different. Everything was different because, I mean, I grew up in a, it was like a Greek and Jewish kind of neighborhood. Okay. A full English. Yeah. But Greek and Jewish. And all we really did was like play hockey and yeah. and, and that street hockey and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, was never really, I wouldn't say deep in music per se. At that point there. Yeah. I, I didn't even know what DJing was at that point. Okay. Uh, when I was 14. But yeah. I was always listening to music my whole life. Yeah. Uh, just through my parents and through like their friends and so on. Yeah. And so, and I was always listening to everything. Okay. Um, but the difference was when I moved to Toronto, that's when I was exposed to, you know, hip hop and reggae and all this stuff. Cause the thing with me is I never, even to this day, I don't really, to a point I mean, but I never kind of categorized music in my brain. Music okay. was just music to yeah. me. So it wouldn't matter if I was listening to super tramp or if I was listening to, you know, Bob Marley, I didn't, you know, I obviously heard Bob Marley back then, but mm-hmm. it wasn't reggae music to me. It was just a song. Yeah, people yeah. don't really understand when I say that, but yeah. I'm like, yeah, it was just music to me. And I, I understand fully. What Which you is mean. the approach I took when I started DJing. Yeah. And I think that helped me a lot. But um, yeah, Montreal was just, you know, being a kid, straight mm-hmm. up being a kid. Yeah. Um, and my exposure to DJing was sonically at first, all sonics. Okay. Never saw it. Yeah. Um, you know, I had an uncle that was a DJ. <laughs> we all had that yeah. uncle. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just sonically. I used to I used to sit him in my room every Saturday night, and mm-hmm. I used to li- I record these mix shows on Saturday nights. But even then, I didn't really understand what it was. Okay. It was just four hours of of music. Yeah. And Montreal was very like dance based, and yes. you know, you're talking like. 84 85 at this time so yeah. it was like 80 stuff and very dancey and stuff yeah. um and i just used to record it because i just loved how music would just go on for hours without stopping like yeah. it just blew my mind and i loved it um and i wasn't really exposed to a physical dj till i got here okay which was a high school dance i went to the high school dance saw yeah. the dj and i was like oh yeah <laughs> oh this you're is what the one is. that does yeah. Yeah. i don't remember who it was i don't remember yeah. if they were good i don't remember anything but all i remembered is Watching one person play a song and everybody went crazy, and I was like, "This is fucking insane!" Yeah. And I was just kind of, I was always kind of gravitated towards it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know how I started, to be honest. Okay. Um, 
like the first time I started or whatever. I don't really yeah. know that, but it just all everything everything changed when I got here. Like my style changed, my mm. French changed, obviously. Okay. Um, my mindset for music changed because my school was like super multicultural. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It had the roughest of the rough. And anybody that knows from Saga back in the day, T.L. Kennedy back in those times, talking 86, was yeah. bad. Okay. Like skinheads <laughs> and, you know, okay. like everything. Yeah. So we One had all these groups pot. to get, exactly, but, mm -hmm. and not the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> so we had the preps, you know, the skinheads yeah. and then Jamaicans and, and all these different people. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know anybody. So when I came in, I knew everybody. So I was the guy that would, you know, I would sit with the skinheads and, yeah. at the calf, and then I'd go to the, the other table, and we'd be doing beats on the table, and I'd go to, you know, this, the, the bookworms, uh -huh. and I, like, I kind of knew everybody. So, and we always had stuff to talk about, because I listened to everybody's music. I loved Depeche Mode, and yeah. I loved, and I was introduced to, you know, this, yeah. the special eds and the EPMDs and all this stuff in, in school. It. So it was like, and I just loved everything. Mm -hmm. And I, I just... Everything just, I don't know, I guess you can say I became, which I physically did and mentally did starting from scratch, probably, you know, when I was like 16 years old. Okay. So probably 88. Yeah. Um, and so then. I thought you were about 18 right now. 18, <laughs> 19, you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, and then, yeah. So, I mean, Montreal, like I say, Montreal for me was really just being a kid. Mm hmm and you know taking in all this different information and music and stuff without knowing what was happening to me at the time so i was just the sponge for yeah. my first 14 years of my life yeah. until i got here and then i was i was everything started to make sense to me i was like ah oh, this is what this is and this is what this is yeah. so both were great mm -hmm. i think had i stayed there in montreal i don't think i ever would have became starting from scratch you to be honest so. okay um who knows what the hell i would have been doing yeah I just don't see it because mm -hmm. even every time I go back to Montreal, I just don't see it. How it could have come together to form this ball of energy. Yeah, it just it, it took me going through what I went through to become who I was here. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. which is a great thing. And I, I love that it did happen because this, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just yeah, just everything. All the friends I made, like everybody contributed to what I am exactly right now. To create this monster of a brand. I'm a transformer, yeah. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And I not a Decepticon. Yeah. But uh, what's what's the good ones again? Um I don't know, but I, I don't watch it. I was yeah. hoping you we weren't gonna go deep into it. I was like, ah fuck, I just set it up. <laughs> no problem. How did you even come up with your name then? A TV guide. A what? A TV guide. Back when we used to have them, the yep. actual paper ones and yep. not the little book, the the big paper ones that yep. came in the paper. Uh huh. Um yeah, it was just I was just you know, the first, I think the first few school things we did, mm -hmm. I was going with like Mark G, which is my name. Okay. And my friend just looked at me, he's like, nah, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> come up so with something better. Originally, it was DJ we're not Mark getting, G. We're not getting any girls right. with this. <laughs> and I was like, ah, okay, fine. Yeah. And I just looked, I looked through records, but nothing was happening. And then I just, looking through, I would look through books and TV guides. And I looked through the TV guide and it was in bold letters and it was like an after school special. And it just said, starting from scratch. And I was like, I like that. Because it just made sense to me, because yeah. in all senses of the words, right? Yeah. So, And this is even before I knew how to scratch. So, Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, it just it was just one of those ah moments, and it just made mm -hmm. sense to me, and it was in bold letters for some odd reason, and that's what it was, and yeah. that's, what, that's when I became wow. starting from scratch. And the funny thing with it, because especially then, it would be either DJ Joe at one other word, but to have three, mm -hmm. and I'm starting from scratch, that's a rather long name. Yeah, it you is. You know what I mean? It is. And nothing I've ever done, I don't think, has been yeah. according, according to <laughs> the book. Traditional, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It, it, I mean, I and again, that's another perfect example of me not knowing the difference. Yeah. Like, I just didn't, not say I was ignorant to it, but I just, it that kind of stuff never bothered me. And it you. still doesn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah, it was just one of those things. I saw it. I wanted it. I did it. Yeah. Like, who's going to tell me no? What are you yeah. going to tell me? No, I can't do that. <laughs> There's no rule I'm, book. I'm DJ starting from yeah. scratch, and that's why. That's, and that's what it was. And, yeah. and you know, I've never, only when I give out my email, yeah. that's when I hear, oh, that's a long name. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise than that, I mean, yeah. it's, always, it's always worked for me. Yeah, because that's what you go by. You can't, you can't see yourself as any other name but that. Yeah, you know I mean? and I mean, obviously, people just gravitated towards Scratch. Mm -hmm. I never promoted that. Yeah, 
Um, I mean, I get it. They're better that than they're going to call me like starting from or yeah. something. So <laughs> I get it. And, you know, thankfully there was only the one other scratch in New York. Yeah. Okay. So it, it, it just, everything always worked out for me. All right. With that. Do you remember your first records that you'd bought under starting from scratch? Yeah. I mean, I always had a base of records because, like I say, my mom worked for the record company. So yeah. I always had a base of records. But, again, it was dance stuff and, like, okay. Phil Collins and all that kind of, of stuff. Of course. Um, and then I used to go to Records on Wheels in Mississauga. Yeah. We used to go on our lunch break. We'd walk over there. Um, and then eventually I gravitated, obviously, to Star Sound and stuff like that back yep. then, downtown. Those were, like, big trips. <laughs> <laughs> Those are big trips. You're going to Toronto. Yeah, that was mm-hmm. that was big trips. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, Records on Wheels. And I used to, uh, the first record I bought was It Takes Two. Okay. Yeah, and then it, back then it was, you know, all, like, inner city and all that house and hip yep. house and all uh-huh. that stuff. And, again, when I'm buying music, I would buy, you know, Special Ed and I would buy inner city not thinking I'm buying hip hop, yeah, and not thinking I'm playing a hip hop set or I'm playing a house set. I just, if I liked it, I bought yeah. it. Okay, so at that time you didn't differentiate. It still didn't differentiate between the genres of music. No, at that point, there. no. And I only say I do it now because it's kind of in your face now. Yeah, it's yeah. like you listen to hip hop and yeah. you listen to this, but you know anybody that's kind of heard me play or whatever, I I just approach. I always still approach music as an open book because yeah. to me it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's what made a big, besides my color and yeah. me not being from here, <laughs> yeah, um, which played a huge part okay. in in good and bad. That's okay. We're gonna we're gonna. <laughs> yeah. I want you to elaborate on that on yeah. the good and the bad. But like with the music thing, it just uh, there was say the fact that I was playing all these different types of music that people knew mm-hmm. but weren't used to hearing anything in that in that setting Makes per sense. se. You know what yeah. I mean? So I was like, who's this kid playing? Yeah. You know this, and then this, and then how is that happening? Yeah. And I guess this it just started to work for me. Okay. And like I say, being you know the white kid in the black scene, yeah, and not being not from here, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It definitely worked. I had tons of haters, industry haters. What? Let's say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes sense because who is this guy? Yeah. Coming and, and getting and all this. Not to say I not to say I rose to the top fast. Mm-hmm. Um. I think in the 19 and plus world, I did. Okay. Um, it took me a long time, like in the in the all ages scene, to get, to make a no pun intended a mark yeah. because yeah. <laughs> it, it took long. Yeah. So you were actually started out in the all ages scene. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, I know it's me coming in 2015. So yeah, next year will be my technically 30 year, but. It's probably been like 32. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. I only gauge it from when I became a professional in my mind. I wasn't. Yeah. But when I thought I knew what I was doing. When Fair I finally enough. had a hold on what I was yeah. doing. Um, but yeah, it just, it was it was weird. It took a long, long time. Like I had to go through all the channels. Yeah. I did the house parties mm-hmm. and I did the DJ competitions yeah. and the schools. Like okay. everything. It was, a, it was a continuous build. Yeah. And I had, like, in high school, it was fine. Mm-hmm. It's when you start to move into other people's territories, that's when the problem starts, right? Like, because, uh, like I say, high school was everybody. Yeah. So, and my principal, who um, was super cool, okay. like, if it wasn't for him, he gave me, like, a huge boost of confidence because he was, okay. a, like, a, he's a legendary CFL quarterback. Okay. For anybody that knows Russ yeah. Jackson. Okay. He was my principal. Yeah. And then there used to be music. People would just play music, but it was like people would play their own music in the cafeteria. And I was like, I went to him one day and I was like, listen, let me DJ in the caf. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what do you mean? Yeah. And I was like, this guy is like, let me play music. Yeah. He's like, well, you're not going to play dirty stuff. I was like, no, yeah. no, no, no. I said, I'll play stuff for everybody. Yeah. Just let me try it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, you know what? Go ahead. Yeah. And we did it. Yeah. And it was crazy. And it was, I guess, turntables at that point there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was just fun. Everybody liked it. It was cool. We did it a couple of times. And then obviously the school dances and all that stuff. And so high school wasn't that bad because it's your peers. These guys are around me. Yeah. And you know how it is. Like when you see somebody doing something, yeah. everybody's like, oh. Beat them up. Yeah, yeah. yeah you must be some, such and yeah. such. And at that time, you know, myself and Frank Morell had started our little group. Okay. Which was the the Brothers from the Ghetto, the Simply Majestic thing. I don't even remember what original (laughs) name we went by. But first of all, we had nothing to do with that name. We had nothing to do with that name. But we we connected in school. Okay. 
and he was a rapper, I was a DJ, obviously. Yeah. And it just was bedroom stuff at the beginning. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big pause on that one. But it was just, you know, we'd go to his house and I'd be cutting up records. He'd be yeah. rapping and we were like, it's pretty dope. Yeah. And we entered competitions and we won and then we won the, you know, the electric circus thing. Okay. And all this other stuff. So everything was happening grade 11-ish yeah. for me. And um, it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger for high school. And then, so by the time I finally did hit the 19, I had a good, I had a good amount of steam. Got you. But there was a big gap in there where it was like, from that EC thing, it was like, everybody was like, okay, well, what are you going to do now? Yeah. And I didn't even know because sure. I never thought we were going to go that far with this group stuff. And then I kind of got punked off with the group stuff because... This guy Anthony Bond, when we won the competition, yeah, signed Frank, which we, and so he was simply majestic. Got you. So he came and gave us the name, and he's like, "You're gonna be this." And I think he tried to give me another DJ name, and I was like, "Go fuck yourself." Yeah. <laughs> That's you know what I mean. Yeah. And then they released records, and there was like computer scratching on it, and I was like, "Well, why am I here?" You know what I mean? Like, what yeah. am I doing here? What's and we purpose? were talking about EC before, but yeah. like. You know, Lindo, that's how I know Lindo for 30 years okay, because we started easy. together, like literally. Crazy. He was a beast on the mic. Yeah. He wasn't even like physically DJing yeah. back then uh, that, that I saw, that yeah. I knew. No, those times I remember him as an as yeah. actual and artist. Mikey yeah, Mikey from all those guys. Uh-huh. From Scarborough. Yeah, uh -huh. all those guys. And, you know, we all used to just do our thing. And it was all ages. It was I was a West End boy. Okay. And then eventually we 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 went to Spectrum. <laughs> legendary yeah place. Well, once once yeah. i went to spectrum that kind of really opened a lot of doors for me but i yeah. again it was tons of fucking hate like yeah i used to get hated on from promoters and and this and that and other djs and and it was just i get it yeah okay so then let's let's open it up then was the hate because of talent color or not from being here or all of the above all of the above yeah absolutely yeah um i mean you can hate me all you want I'm not a cocky person at all, but yeah. you can hate me all you want, but there's very few that mm. can, especially back then, that yeah. could mess with me. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh -huh. On a music level. Yeah. Um, but I had to pay my dues. You know, at those time, there were there was another white guy named Jeremy, and I forget his partner there, but I think they were called Partners in Rhyme or Partners in Crime. Something. They were DJs on CHRY. Okay. So it was Hutchie mm -hmm. that used to bring me out to all these Spectrum things and all that stuff. And they were the guys back then. So they would always be on the bills. And what was his name? Gary something from CHRY too. Yeah. He would always be hosting. I don't even remember those guys. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, like they had, of course, Mastermind and X. Those yeah. guys were like mm -hmm. the bosses. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Especially, mm -hmm. I'm just talking all ages. So yeah. those guys were the bosses. Mm -hmm. And so I had to pay my dues. I was the third guy in the bill. You yeah. know what I mean? I play the early outs. <laughs> and it was that one time at Spectrum. It was the Naughty by Nature concert with Black Sheep. Yeah. The other DJ was late, yeah. so I played in his slot, and I played right in between Black Sheep and Naughty by Nature and, and crushed it. Prime, cause that's prime time. It was prime time. And that's when, like, Choice is Yours was, like, the monster. Yeah. Like, they were bigger than, he was bigger than Naughty by Nature at the time. Okay. And then it was just that set, and everybody was like, who's that guy? Who's that yeah. guy? And I'd been there many times yeah. before, but now I was in a different slot. Time and place, time and place. Time and place and performance, mm -hmm. always. No matter what you do, I don't care who yeah. you are, performance is key. 100%. If you can, and I've always, that's always been my thing with me. It's like, I don't care if there's five people, 5,000, mm -hmm. perform at your best because the weirdest shit has happened to me with five people in the room. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, <laughs> and the best shit has happened to yeah. me with 5,000 people. So yeah. you never know. Mm -hmm. And, and so, yeah, it was just from that. And then, you know how it goes when you're the kid. Mm -hmm. Now I'm the kid. Yeah. So I'm the kid. Now they start, you know, I want you here. And I'm, yeah. I'm playing seven nights a week and da-da-da-da-da. Okay. You know what I mean? But again, it's like, this was all before 19. Yeah. Okay, this is all... All before 19. Got you. 19 was a whole new ball game. Yeah. Because I still wasn't a downtown kid. I didn't know downtown at all. You okay. know what I mean? We were still doing... You know, Spectrum was the, the furthest I would go. That's true, because that was still on the Dankfort. So yeah, it and was it was all almost, ages. Yeah. It was all ages. So right? it didn't really matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was Spectrum or I was in the West. Yeah. You know what I mean? The West, I was doing fine. Every There was a lot of guys doing their thing in the West, mm -hmm. but we just had good parties. And house parties back then were everything. Yeah. We used to do, we have legendary house parties we did uh -huh. on Rathburn, all that stuff. Yeah. 
we did crazy, crazy parties. Mm -hmm. And then um, it was really two people that were kind of to to get me over that nineteen year old thing was mm -hmm. two. There were two key people. One was Wayne Williams, okay, and one was Erica, who owned California Dreams. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. So I say Wayne because I have to actually wait till I was nineteen to be able to play a tweets. Okay. <laughs> if anybody remembers tweeds yeah, yeah you're Ontario mm -hmm. uh, Burnham Thorpe so yeah I had to wait till I was 19 and then he, he would bring me in because he had heard me play I guess we had done parties or whatever stars right. and superstars and all yeah. that stuff and he's a West End guy too and then um, yeah I used to just come in to play a reggae set at tweeds you were playing reggae then? all I played was reggae because they had he had his guy Bobby Brown yeah they had their thing going on and mm -hmm. I was the guy who came and played the reggae thing okay so there again, it's like, as soon as I come into this, and Tweeds was like, it was the shit back yeah. then. It was Thursday nights, and it was the shit. Yeah. Like, every people were coming from all over. And nobody knew me, because yeah. it was now we're in 19 plus. So you push a reset. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Everything I did before mm -hmm. doesn't really matter at this point. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole, once you hit that 19 market, it's a whole new ball game. Yeah. So I would come in there and play, and of course, first thing is like, who's playing the reggae? And they look yeah. up. No way. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. when I say it worked, it absolutely worked in my favor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Had I just been another guy, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. But I looked different. The fascination, and you were good at what you're doing. So they were not only fascinated by, hey, it's this white guy up there playing the music, but you were actually good at it. And I think I just played it differently because I think differently. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I wasn't going in there like a reggae guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I, it, that stuff, I was like, you know, the mixing and all yeah. that stuff and just treating it like it's yeah. house music uh -huh. or treating it like it's hip hop. <laughs> just playing It's just different. music. Yeah. And then I would go in there, do that. And then from that came Baritz. Mm -hmm. And we used to do So Tuesdays, we'd do Baritz. And then Baritz was live to air. So it was like a whole, everything just kept kind of moving yeah. again. And, and then we started our own night at the California Dream in Saga. There was actually two There was a California Dream. I didn't know that. No S sure. <laughs> in Saga. Yeah. And then um, we did that crazy. I mean, everything used to be crazy back then, honestly, mm -hmm. especially in Saga. I don't know. I'm sure cr shit was crazy out here, too, yeah. in the East. Yeah, 100%. Um, but I wasn't he out here that frequently back yeah. then when I first started. Mm -hmm. So I was doing all this stuff. I did Brits, and then we did that. That's where I met Erica, yeah. who was doing California Dreams downtown. Yeah. Who had Ebony Sound Crew yeah. as their resident Saturday okay. nights. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was a one two change. She mm -hmm. took me, she's like, I want to bring you downtown. Yeah. I was like, Well, I never really played downtown yeah. before. <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, I'm going to bring you downtown. Mm -hmm. And she really believed in me mm -hmm. and would literally come to my house. Pick me up with yeah. my nine crates yeah. and drive me downtown because <laughs> yeah. I wasn't driving back yeah. then. And first day I went in, it was literally, "Hey, this is this is Quincy and Eddie, their Ebony Sound Crew." Yeah. Next week, it was me by myself. <laughs> it was literally like changing of the guard. Like, yeah. You know, we've had enough. She yeah. just said, "You know, like we're they've been they've been here so long. We need a change. They need refresh." And for her to like put that faith in a guy like me, who nobody yeah. really knew downtown, mm -hmm. and look at me, yeah. you know what I mean, and stick me like bang. And <laughs> yeah. California Dreams is like, it was the crazy Saturday night. Yeah, that you was had the that spot. And you had Studio Sixty Nine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like she just took that chance and just threw me in there. And from California Dream, that was it. Yeah, that was like my. That was my gold record. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like anything I could have asked for, everybody came through there. You know what I mean? I played the whole night by myself, never stopped the music. Okay. You were by yourself all night. Yeah. I had just me playing the whole yeah. night from 10 to 3 or 3.30 or whatever we mm -hmm. did. And, you know, that's a long night. You know what I mean? What? It was just me and, and Bobby D was the MC, And that okay, was so it. So Bobby D was around from back then also. Yeah. Bobby D. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be just me and him at, at Dream. And then, um, yeah, she just stuck me in there. And from that, that was it. Like, that was a wrap. My Amazing. name was like Stamp. Yeah. This is the guy, bam, bam, bam. Mm -hmm. And then from then on, it was just the flood opened. The floodgates open, and, and I was just I li literally playing. You know, I was still living with my mom them times. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm playing seven nights a week, you know, sleeping till 3 o'clock in the afternoon, get up, go do my thing, nothing else, didn't care yeah. about anything else. You know what I mean? 
every Thursday, you go to the record store, you know, mm-hmm. go to Eglinton, get your reggae, mm-hmm. go to here, you know what I mean? And all that stuff. And and it was just beautiful because I was just able to be me all the time. Yeah. I've never, I never had to jeopardize anything. She said, just do you, play your house music, you know, play your, we used to play slow jams at like 1230, you know what I mean? And bring the party back yeah. up, like. You're an orchestra leader. When you're playing music for six hours in front of people. By yourself. You're an orchestra. Everything is you. Mm -hmm. So it was like that really, I had never really done nights like, full nights like that before. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was beautiful on so many levels. It just, it changed, it it changed me as a DJ. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You had no choice. You had to mature very quickly because. Absolutely. Pacing yourself by yourself is totally different than having two or three other people with you. Yeah. Now I have to pace. And I had to learn new music. Mm -hmm. I had to learn Soka. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what Soka was. Okay. You know what I mean? I had four Byron Lee albums (laughs) and you laugh, but that's literally what I was playing. Cause, and I thought Byron Lee created all these sides. Like, this guy's a fucking genius. <laughs> I was like, this guy this guy has everything. <laughs> so, like, I didn't know. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I would literally go and I'd be like, what soca do I need? And, and you know, whoever it was at the time, Ernest mm-hmm. or whoever it was, yeah. just give me the record and be like, go okay. about your business. All right, I'm good and I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. I could play eight songs off these two albums. Yeah. Okay, give me doubles. Yeah. You know, I'm woe donkeying <laughs> yeah. them to death. You know what I mean? <laughs> But I didn't know. So I was learning. I had to learn all this stuff, too. I mean, I had a good feel of the reggae and, and the hip. But even hip hop is like I had to learn. I learned everything was fresh to me when I got here. Yeah. So it's like I had to learn everything over again. But I was still able to do, you know, it was, you know, 92 or whatever. But I'm able to play 80s music and mm-hmm. write to the, the stuff I bought that Thursday. Yeah. I was playing on the Saturday. So it was like it was a, it was a great you know, combination of just everything, and, and it was it shaped me. Yeah. It really shaped me, and it and it let me, you know, it became the definition of who I am, yeah. what I was known for. California you know what I mean? Because I was playing shit mm-hmm. that Ebony probably wasn't playing, mm-hmm. or just playing it differently, or whatever yeah. it was. I shook, I shook it up. Yeah, and I'm glad I did. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I'm always grateful. Erica knows I love her to death. Yeah. I'm always grateful for for what she did for me, and um, yeah, and just from then it was just nonstop. Yeah. But see, those situations of it not being my fault, but me being like, oh, and then he came and took their job and and he did this. And how could you, you know, go to Erica and how could you hire a white guy and take the black guys out of the club? And I'm like, here we go. What do you want me to do? Yeah. I'm supposed to say no. You know what I mean? I'm just want to play some music. I didn't give a shit. I still don't. I still don't. And I never have. Yeah. And I was always. Like, for the most part, I've always been by myself, yeah. which was probably why I have this mentality now of, like, mm-hmm. you didn't help me, so fuck you, Yeah, basically. Makes sense. If you didn't put money in my pocket or you didn't help me and shape me in some way, mm-hmm. don't tell me shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I always, I just got tired of that, and I just got tired of the, like, it came to the point where it was, like, people are calling. I'd get on the phone, one guy, I want to book you here. And then the next guy is, like, oh, this person's talking shit because you took this. And I was, like, I, first of all, I didn't take anything. I only took what I was offered. Yeah. I don't play all sides of the field. Yeah. I play my side of the field because I don't care about your side of the field. It makes no sense. If you sense. can't handle your business and control your shit and maintain your business, uh-huh. that's your problem, uh-huh. not mine. Right? <laughs> Got it. I never set out to be like, I'm going for this guy's job and I'm going to take that. Yeah. I never did that. What's yeah. the point in that? Yeah. That'll only make me the ultra villain and it's going to come back to bite me of in the Of course, some, then somebody, you're going after somebody's job and somebody's behind you going after yours. So it's just a vicious yeah. cycle of... I never set out yeah. to be malicious in any sense because it doesn't... A, it's not in my nature, but it just, you can't... And even though I wasn't, you know, who would have thought, I didn't think I was going to be still be here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who would have thought that? Uh-huh. Any DJ for that matter. But it's not even that, like, it, that was my long-term plan. I was just like, there's no point in me doing this. Yeah. If I'm going to, you know, I'm not a shady person by nature, but why would I undercut people? And yeah. I, I've never cut my price to get a gig off some, mm. ever. That's not I've your I've raised style. my price. I was uh-huh. like, from early on, mm-hmm. I was just, I was good at business mm-hmm. and I was bad at business. Got you. I was smart enough to be like, you know what? I'm getting books this much. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, back then, whatever, we Four hundred dollars, probably yeah. I was charging. Yeah, and which that, is probably that, what everybody was. That, and yeah. that's pretty substantial. At and I'm that by time myself. There for, yeah, I don't have to yeah. share it with anybody, <laughs> right? So at I was like, time. yeah, I think around that. But I was smart enough. The good thing was I was smart enough that I was like, I'm working seven nights a week. Yeah, I don't want to be working seven nights a week all the time. So mm-hmm. you know what? Now I'm going to charge eight hundred dollars. 
and dump, I'm going to double up and four nights time, time. Yeah. right? But so what happened? Of, of course, if people are like, "Oh, come on, guy, I've known you for so long," I was yeah. like, "Sorry, yeah. I don't need to work for this much anymore." Mm-hmm. Keep in mind, I'm still living with my mom, <laughs> not paying for a car. Yeah. All the money I was making was just mine. Crazy. And I've never been a yeah. lavish spe- spender by any yeah. means. I clothes, I don't care. This is yeah. me, track pants, and yeah. this is probably my outfit for the, the first 20 Keep years of my life. Yeah, yeah, I've always been simple. Um, so, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I'm happy I had that foresight to just be like, you know what? Screw this. This is what I want. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was, if, if, as, as far as I know, I was the first one to be like, $1,000. <laughs> That shook the industry. Yeah. Listen, that shook the entire industry when everybody would say, okay, let's hire Scratch, and they hear 1000 yeah. bucks. And this is like shook mid, everybody. Mid 90s. Yeah. And it, became to, it just came to the point they had no choice. Yeah. It's like, yes, do we give this kid the 1000 mm. or we just don't have him? Yeah. And because the 90s was so, de- it was all DJs. Yeah. No, no one cared about promoters. Yeah. No one, it didn't even matter where you were. Mm-hmm. People followed the DJs. One hundred percent, like and strong. I mean, yeah, I, I know. Even when you tell people that now, they're like, they, they don't understand if yeah. they weren't there. We were the stars. Mm-hmm. The like, DJs, one hundred percent. The DJs were yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. Didn't matter where you are. You know what I mean? They would fall. They would fucking snow yeah. anywhere. Pickering, Hamilton, scratches there. Did not matter. We're going exactly. Yeah. And and it, like I say, it just came to that point where they had no choice. Mm-hmm. And when I knew that, I raised my price again. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, yeah. why not? Yeah. Now, when I say that's the good side of it, the bad side of it is, no, I didn't invest money. Yeah. I wasn't thinking smart. You know what I mean? Like You're a kid making this money. I was making a lot of money. Yeah. With no fucking responsibilities. You know what I mean? So it's like, I was just, I literally, like, I, I, Around 25, I was like, by the time I'm 30, I'm going to own a house. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm going to own my house. Yeah. I had made so much money. I could have bought fucking 10 houses by that point. You know what I mean? I made so much Scott. money. And my business sense was yeah. just so shitty yeah. on that side of the field. But you understood the DJ business, but you probably didn't understand real I did and I didn't. Yeah. I understood my business. Yes. So yeah. I'm sure I went against the grain a lot. Yeah. And for that, again, I don't care mm-hmm. because it wasn't my grain in the first place. Yeah. So, I, again, all these things that I've done have just because I didn't know any different. Got you. No one ever sat me down and be like, you need to do this first and you need to do this first. And nobody ever did that for me. Okay. Nobody said, you know, you're making this much money. Why don't you put your money in here? Mm-hmm. I wish somebody did that for me. You know what I mean? Like we all do. Yeah. Now yeah. everybody, but now everybody has those tools, mm-hmm. right? So it's like I didn't have that, and by the same token, I also didn't have people except for promoters yeah. tell me don't charge this much. Yeah. It was only promoters that would fight me on it because they wanna they want the better. Yeah. Way. It's not because they're doing it for your benefit. And I was just I was benefit. just ignorant, like rude ignorant, not yeah. dumb ignorant, yeah. because I was like, well, you're doing this much people. Mm-hmm. And I'm the one bringing the people. Mm-hmm. Again, not in a cocky way. Yeah. But I know why you're hiring me. In a strategic business yeah. way. It's it's straight business. It's, it's called like, a spade a spade. You call me to do your party. Mm-hmm. Why are you calling me to do a party? Mm-hmm. You think I'm the best? Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Let's handshake that out. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I'm yeah. happy. Yeah. That's not why you're calling me. <laughs> you're calling me because you know yeah. people are going to come. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I wasn't even promoter back then. Like I, I don't even remember when I did my first party, but... Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I just, it just never, that promotion part of it never, probably I was so jaded from the fucking clowns I had to deal with yeah. for so many years. And just seeing like, you've seen so many promoters and you can just tell they don't have anything. You know, they're relying on mm-hmm. every penny that comes through that door to pay uh-huh. their bills and so forth. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So I was like, I just didn't, I never wanted to be that guy. Yeah. I said, if this is what I'm going to do, there's two things. I'm going to make sure I'm giving the best product out. So I wouldn't leave my bedroom yeah. until I was ready to play music. Okay. Like when I was first, first starting, you know, I had a tape deck yeah. and I had the my wooden table uh, turntable that my mom of course. had. Of course. No pitch. It had yeah. two buttons, 33 uh-huh. and 45. <laughs> uh-huh. And it would raise up and down like that. And I had the tape deck. I had all my tapes mm-hmm. from Montreal, mix shows. I would play them. 
I would take my mom's records. My mom bought me a little Radio Shack mixer, yeah. the $99 one. Mm-hmm. It was a pyramid. And then I would take it and then just, I'd learn by myself. I would just kind of try to manually do it. And, I would, and when, it, when it was faster, I would do that with the pitch and kind yeah. of hold it in between. You know what so I mean? So you was, knew that pitch actually did something. To yeah, the by, then I'd, by then I'd seen it. Got you. Yeah. But I didn't, I was learning by myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then did that for probably like a year. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Of that <laughs> nonsense. Technique. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, my friend told me, yeah, I got stuff at my house. And I went there and I was like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> like real, there's actually real stuff for this. I was yeah. like, Jesus. You know, they had the 12s and stuff. And I was like, holy shit. How did you feel that first time you actually touched a 12? It's Didn't it feel it's like. It's the same thing as. Getting a woman to lay yeah. down on top of you for the first time. <laughs> it's that same feeling. Yeah. I was like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. This is this is the real deal. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Mm -hmm. And then we used to go to his house and we just play music for hours and hours. And then eventually he lent them to me. Yeah. You know, for he's like, just take them. And I was like, maybe he saw something in me. You know yeah. what I mean? He's like, just take them. So I had them in my house. And literally I would come home from school. I would eat my cereal quick yeah. downstairs and right up to my room. Yeah. Put my bag down. I don't think I did homework right. once in my high school year, <laughs> to be honest with you. And that was my homework. Yeah. And I would literally just sit and play music for no lie, probably six hours a day. Practicing upon practicing. Yeah. Again, not practicing for a purpose. Yeah. Just because I wanted, I just wanted, I wanted to hear the music mixed and yeah. I wanted it to be sound good to me. Yeah. So I just wanted to figure out how to do that properly. Makes sense. When did you find out that you were actually good at this when were you self-aware to say hey you know what i'm above average with this right here i don't know if i would say i was above average mm. but i think i i figured i had a handle on it in high school just yeah. because of school dances and stuff and i could see like you could see how people kind of would gravitate differently yeah you know what i mean like i was going in dj competitions in high school and i mean i could scratch and stuff back then mm -hmm. And we're t again, we're talking 80s. So it's like <laughs> scratching then to scratching now is two totally different things. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, and, yeah. and I, I could scratch. And I, I, back then I was like, you know, putting records on 45 and scratching yeah. like super fast and all that Crazy. stuff. Yeah. Um, and what I would just do the weirdest shit. Yeah. I would like make Christmas songs and do mixes with Christmas <laughs> songs. And I would win. Yeah. So I was like. Okay, mm. and there was other guys there, like, lighting the records on fires and the right. basketballs and all this shit. And I would just come and I was mixing. Yeah. And people just liked it. So I was like, okay, mm -hmm. you know, I can do this thing and I can do it differently yeah. and it's okay. And people will like it. When from that moment, from those moments, I was like, well, there's no reason for me to try. It. Why would I, would, why change? It makes sense. So it's I was just working. like, I would, and, and again, I'm not setting, I wasn't setting out to be like, let me grab the weirdest song here and the weirdest song here and mix them together. I was just yeah. like, I like this Christmas song yeah. and I like this house song. How can I put them together so yeah. I can make the Christmas song danceable? Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't know Boney M yeah. back then had Christmas songs you could dance to. <laughs> so you had to invent them. Yeah, it was just, and, I, and I've always been like that. And it was actually Drew, like Big Daddy D, mm -hmm. or Big, Big Daddy, that shows how long I've known her. <laughs> Drew Dazzle, whatever yeah. he goes by now. Uh huh. When that whole mashup thing started and it yeah. became humongous. Mm -hmm. He pulled me to the side one day and he's like, you're an idiot. Yeah. And I was like, why? He's like, you know, you were doing this 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, I guess, you know, kind of, sort of. I always have. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mashup has just been me. Acapella mixes with, oh, it's, that's mashup. That's who you are. It's always been my style from day one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I guess so. I'm not by no means claiming I invented mashup because <laughs> I'm sure there were other DJs doing the same thing. Probably. I'm just saying in general, it's like, that was all it's just always been my approach so when you know the mashup stuff came out i was like okay now everybody's doing it so let's think of a different way to play music again you know what i mean and i think that's natural in every dj's life <laughs> when new music comes out how do you you were like we were talking before yeah. about adapting to the times it's like mm -hmm. you have to continuously you know now that i know more reggae now that i know more soca now that i know more house mm -hmm. and and you know, like I say, back then it was a lot easier for that to play that way because everybody listened to everything. Yeah. Most clubs you went into, always a house set, 
always a hip hop set, yeah. always a reggae set, mm -hmm. always a so everything. It was all in. But one. now everything's so compartmentalized, yeah. and you know you're either listening to trap or you yeah. go to a house club, or which is cool, and I kind of don't like it. Yeah, you know what I mean. And because I grew up on a different flex, mm -hmm. totally makes sense. And all the parties we used to do were always like that. Everything. 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 Which is a beautiful thing, which is the way music should be played, yeah. in my opinion. Because, again, it's music. And that's what you see it as, just as music itself. Yeah. And it's just like, if you if you can somehow make it funky for someone, if you can make it sonically a beautiful thing, mm -hmm. anything is possible with music. Period. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. Mm -hmm. You may not like, like if, if I was sitting with you and I was like, do you like rock? And you're like, eh. I'd be like, okay, come to this party. I'm gonna you change your view done. on. I'm gonna change your view on that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because there's ways to give music to people in ways that, and I've heard that throughout my career. It's like yeah. I've always heard people say like, "Oh, I used to fucking hate this song until you started playing it, and, yeah. and or you played it at this spot, and that's just the way it's music how is." You served it. Yeah, it's you just different. I mean? It's just a different thing. And again, it's not like I'm not taking credit for anything in general. I'm just saying, it's just always been my approach. It's just to play music, give it to people. There's never been music I I don't think shouldn't be heard. Yeah. I just don't get it. Like, yeah. I, I never understand. I never used to understand when I would, you know, I worked at, at tracks for, you, you know, eight years. You got the, listen, you took the thinking right out of my mind. Because mm. that's what I was about to ask you next. As a DJ, how important is the record store culture for you back then? Because that's where I remember meeting you, mm -hmm. at tracks yeah, yeah. on Young Street. Yeah, you know it was I mean? awesome. It yeah. was, I mean, it was, it was, it was amazing. I yeah. mean, I love George to death. Shake down George. Uh -huh. He's like, he was like a second father to me. He's, mm -hmm. he's like, I love him to death. Yeah, and he's another guy that gave me a chance. You know yeah. what I mean? And it was, it, it was a beautiful thing. I mean, but this, and but my point before is like, I would talk to people there because mm -hmm. there would always be guys that would come in every week and just buy hip hop or just buy Euro music or just buy house, and I just blew my mind. I was like, why, why? Like, I don't yeah. understand, you don't understand it. it. I don't get it. There's yeah. look like look at that wall. Yeah. You know, look how much shit is there. Like look at this wall. Yeah. Look what's over here. Nope. I just want to go to the back, yeah. the very back, pick up the hip hop and yeah. pay for it. And I mean, to each their own yeah. at the end of the day, if you're not feeling the music, I get it. I I just don't understand it personally. Yeah. yeah. Cuz I'm a music guy. So mm -hmm. I just I just it, it always kind of blew my mind. I mean, if it's a budget thing, mm -hmm. by all means, get yeah. what you need. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> Especially yeah. back then where you were you had to go and buy your records. Absolutely. You know? And I mean, I went through that phase yeah. in, in the early years of high school where I, I would literally be like yeah. <laughs> counting coins and be like, I can get one record. Yeah. What record do I need the most? Uh -huh. Now think about that yeah. as a DJ. <laughs> well, like where you have any DJ that started in the last 15 years, mm -hmm. think about that for yeah. a second. Like think about it. If you yeah. didn't have it, you cannot play it yeah. physically in your yeah. hand. You know what I mean? Like, That's so crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. So there would be times where I'd have to call my friends and be like, you know, okay, I know you bought house. Okay, I'm gonna buy hip hop. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that's how. That's actually how me and Russell started. For real. Yeah. Okay. So like he would buy the he would buy a lot of house stuff, and I would buy the, the like hip hop stuff, and mm -hmm. then he would buy hip hop stuff, and I would buy house stuff, and we just put our records together and play music. Yeah. So it's like back then it was it like there's been so many different types of camaraderies with DJs along the years. Yeah. But that record store thing was like. It was like the TV show Cheers. Mm -hmm. You know what That's I mean? It's everybody like everybody met. came Thursdays. That's you know, the local water and hold. Yeah, this. your Thursday four o'clock, and you make your thing. Star Sound yeah. tracks play the record. Star Sound tracks play the record. And then Star Sound Young went Street. away, and then mm -hmm. Carnival Records, and uh -huh. you know what I mean? Like it was just like, but that was it. And I think that was an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. You know, people be like, "Oh, you got that?" Yeah. <laughs> okay, hold one for me. And yeah. My friends would be calling me like, "Hold me this record, and hold me this record, yeah. and hold me this record." I come out with a stack of records. By the time we do, I don't even get to the shelf, and guys are like, "Give me it." You know I what I mean? It. And yeah. I was a straight asshole at yeah. tracks. So I'd be like, "No, you're not going to use it. Yeah, you take this one." You know what I mean? Like we always laugh one about that. One for you, yeah. none for you. Because I also knew you. the guys that were going to use them. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I'd be like. Nope. Um, <laughs> you get it. I got four. You get yeah. it. You get it. You know what I mean? But that's it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and it was a beautiful thing, too, because I got to learn so much about music. Okay. You know, I had, like, you know, Tyrone, Peter and Tyrone, who were house gods. Yeah. So, I, yep. I was, like, I into that. But I've always been into house music. Yeah. I love house music. Um, I know I would do California Dreams mm -hmm. every Saturday, finish at three. Yeah. Wait for Erica's mom to cook the food. Yeah. We'd eat the food and yeah. then go to a warehouse till like 6.30 in the morning. Wow. I'd for go to house. a warehouse and listen to music, house mm -hmm. music, mm -hmm. go home. You know what I mean? That was my routine. Yeah. 
Um, but I got to learn about, you know, like Euro music and, and just different this different music all the time. And mm. it, it was great to be in that setting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because Not, there's so much interaction with like-minded people. Everybody's a DJ. Either you're a reggae DJ, mm. hip-hop, or you're playing everything together. And we're here. So we get to, it's almost like the record store was almost like DJ church. Absolutely. Because yeah. everybody would talk to each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And different because i worked there so yeah. everybody would talk to me yeah but i would talk to a bunch of people you know i had my regulars every week i knew the guys you know what i mean that would spend money mm -hmm. you know it, it it was a great thing and, and just you know we'd all be in there and be like oh okay you know krs came out okay where are you gonna play what are you gonna play this week what are you gonna which version are you play yeah. you know what i mean and so yeah it, it was just a beautiful thing mm -hmm. and you know it, it, it goes right back to it. You didn't, like I said before, I would get records on a Thursday, be able to play them on the Saturday, even yeah. that night, mm -hmm. Thursdays at wherever I was playing. Mm -hmm. um, but again, if you didn't have it, you cannot play it, yeah. which is a crazy thing to think about. A concept now to think about. What do you mean? Nobody you can understand it because everybody has everything at their yeah. fingertips right now. But literally, it'd be like, we'd be calling people if we didn't have the record, like, can I board a record? Can I, come on, man, let me board a record. Like, you got <laughs> nope. it. Let me board it. Yeah. Nope. You know, I mean, you and we had our little squad, and guys yeah. would do that, of course. But yeah, it was just, it was just, it was a great. Like, I'm so glad I had the chance to go yeah. through all those things. You know, and I'm glad I got the punk offs. Mm -hmm. I'm glad, you know, I had to fight to get to my spot, that yeah. slot at Spectrum. I'm mm -hmm. glad I, I put in the work to get there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm glad I did my house parties. I'm glad I did this. I'm glad I did that. Because I wouldn't have been able to sustain for so long. Yeah. That's why I'm not phased by the... things now. Like, I've come to the point now where it's like, you know, trap took over. Mm -hmm. I'm not a trap guy. Yeah. I don't mind the music, mm -hmm. but don't call me for that because there's yeah. guys way better at it than me. Yeah. So what do I do? I just create something else. That works for you. Yeah. And that's where we're going to go. Because after tracks now, you said you were there for eight years. I think about eight years. Okay. Yeah. Were you also, when did you start your radio career? Because you've been on almost basically every major urban station that we've had in toronto yeah i mean i used to do my guest spots uh like um on the obviously on the college stuff mm -hmm. i did a few guest spots i never had a show you never had a show like on never uh, had my own show until flow. Our, none of those. never had my own show until flow okay um but i used to just do guest spots mm -hmm. um a couple times i went with russell to mastermind show never yeah. played on it i don't think um, he might know different but i don't yeah. think i did um never did exit show yeah um, and those were the two monsters back then. Of course, then. 88 one was yeah. X, and um, I think Mastermind was 105. Yeah, and then he yeah. went to, to Energy 108. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I had done other shows because I was doing a lot of work at 105 back then because we used to do a lot of the parties together and stuff. And then Ron Nelson had the Master Mix yeah. on WBLK. Mm -hmm. um, that did good for me because I, I did a few of those. That part yeah. There, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about it. He had that. like Dizzy and yeah. all these guys, mm -hmm. and, and I never really got along with Ron. Mm hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. Sure. Never. We've always had a weird relationship, but he gave me a shot and yeah. I'll always be respectful for that. But he also punked me off a lot of times. Too, so. <laughs> and now that you think, now that you say that I'm a flyer connoisseur, I collect flyers. Now that you say it, I have a lot of his flyers and I don't really remember no. seeing you on. No, nah, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. We never really clicked like that, it's but we had, things. we had, we had moments. Like yeah. I think we've always been cool. Yeah. It's just cordial but we don't like to get into business yeah yeah there's a few guys like that yeah and yeah so he gave me that shot i get a few of those master mixes but again those opportunities came because of who i was at the time mm -hmm. you know what i mean i we knew we didn't have the relationship like yeah. that but he also knew that having me on there yeah. was going to be a big boost for him as much as it was for me. So it was the put the best person in the best position of to course. win. So we always that's business. He's smart. He's always been smart. One hundred percent. May not be the best at yeah. it, but he's always been smart. <laughs> Had his head on his shoulders. Yeah, always. And then I, I did you know a few of the live to airs on Energy One Hundred Eight and stuff like okay. that with Wayne Williams, as we spoke about before. Mm -hmm. And then, um. 2001 was where my real radio career just started and, and haven't yeah. stopped since then. <laughs> From there. So you were part of the original launch of Flow mm -hmm. when it first started out? It was one of the last hired. Okay. And that was all because of Farley Flex. Yeah. So I had heard, obviously, that the station was coming. Mm -hmm. Wasn't interested. You weren't? Wasn't interested at all. I thought you would have been. Wasn't interested yeah. before because... 
I've never worked for anybody. I did, you know, the McDonald's and yeah. Mark's Rick Warehouse. I yeah. Lime Ricky's. I think I worked there for two days. Right. <laughs> but I only worked there because I used to have a DJ there on Saturday yeah. nights, and I wanted to play. And I so never that got the it chance. was your way yeah, in. I never got the chance. Yeah. So I quit because they didn't want to get rid of their guy. Yeah. But I did all those gigs in high school to pay for my records. Got you. Once I started making money as a DJ, mm-hmm. I never looked back. Yeah. And I, I'm that type of person. I cannot work in it like i can't work for i don't deal well with that's, authority that's not your yeah i cannot even in high school like i can't take people talking down to me telling yeah. me what to do mm-hmm. it's probably my scorpio nature but uh-huh. i just i like i turn into a totally different person when that yeah. happens to me so i was like i'm great even like that's why i say like with the erica thing and all these other things have always been on my terms yeah not that my terms were anything crazy i was just yeah. like just let me do my thing yeah don't tell me what to play leave me alone i'll leave you alone leave me alone and connect. i'm good and it's always she always left me erica always yeah. left me alone yeah because she knows how i am too yeah. you know what i mean um and anyone that knows erica knows that that's probably very tough for yeah. her <laughs> <laughs> she's very hands she's on. very hands-on yeah but she's always been straight with me mm-hmm. just because she believed in me and she knew she just told me where to go, yeah. and she knew I was going to get there, and mm-hmm. that was great. Um, yeah, and so just I've always been. I just I knew I wasn't able to do that stuff. Yeah. I had to be by myself. Yeah. So when I heard the flow thing, and everybody was like, you know, they're going to call you. I know they're going to call you. They're going to call you. They're not. Yeah. I know they're going to call. I was like, yeah, I'm not interested. Yeah. To be honest. Mm-hmm. And then Farley called me, and he's like, "Do you want to do this?" And I said, "Nope." Yeah. He's like, "Why not?" I was like. I don't really want to work for anybody, to be honest with you, and I don't want to wake up early. I didn't even know anything about it, but it's like I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm playing seven nights a week. I'm making a lot of money. I don't, you know what I mean? Come on. He's like, listen, do me a favor. Mm -hmm. And I've known Farley since like '89 because of Maestro, so we've known each other a long time. He's like, do me a favor, just come in Mm -hmm. and hear what it's about, and let's see what happens. Fair enough. (laughs) I was like, okay, only for you, Mm -hmm. I'll come in. And, you know, Specs was already on board. Jay was already on board. Okay. Um, they had their, you know, Little Red. They had their they had their squad. Mm-hmm. Um, so I came in, and at that time, they had um, a program director who was from the U.S. Okay. Michelle yeah. Price. So she, But she didn't know anybody. Yeah. And she didn't care to. So it made she no didn't difference. She didn't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, these guys are paying me. Yeah. This is my station. This mm-hmm. is that. So... I walked in, they had the DJ room set up at that point, and Farley's like, okay, just go in the room, and we're going to show you what's what, and then he's like, and then you just got to audition. I said, hold on a second, audition? (laughs) I said, I thought you brought me in here for like, to show me what's up. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, no, she wants to hear you play. I said, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah. I said, if she wants to hear me play, she can come hear me at the club. Like I was ignorant <laughs> back then, just because yeah. I was like, again, I don't play well like that. And you when didn't people want approach to really me like that, it, and I so. exactly, I didn't really want to do it. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you understand. Yeah, that. <laughs> they didn't. So he's like, oh, come on, just go in." So she, so I went in the room. Mm-hmm. She's there, and she didn't really say many words to me. And she's like, "Hold on a second. So mm-hmm. she brings all these people in the room. Yeah. And I, they're all my friends. Right. Like I'm talking to like the DJs, and yeah. I know all these people. So I'm like, what's what's this? Yeah. She's like, well, play. And she literally, she's like, well, play. And she looked at me like that, and I was like, huh? <laughs> and she's like, well, play. Yeah. Show me what you got. And I was like, no. Mm-hmm. And I walked. I walked out. Okay. And I was like, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> I looked around. I looked at Farley. I was like, fuck this. And I yeah. walked out. Mm-hmm. And I walked down the hallway. And Farley, and he just grabbed my arm. Yeah. And he's like, listen, this is going to be something big. Yeah. And he's like. Trust me. Mm-hmm. He's like, just go back. I said, Farley, I'm not going to play music for my fucking friends <laughs> to audition <laughs> yeah. for something, you know, I thought mm-hmm. you guys called me here for. Yeah. He's like, listen, please just do this. Trust me. I was like, you know what, Farley? Again, because it's you yeah. and I have love and respect for you, I'll go back in. He's like, just close your eyes mm-hmm. and play music like I know you can. Yeah. Literally, I went in. Played, put one song on this turntable and went jigga jigga and put this song on the other side. She's like, okay, thank you. <laughs> what? So I'm like, you fucking. All she, she just wanted to know that she got me to do what she wanted yeah. to do. That's all she wanted. So it was, she was basically trying to program you from early. Yeah. To show you that, listen, this is my house. Yeah. You need to do what Peeing I Peeing on her fire hydrant. Uh-huh. Which I get. Yeah. I get it. Mm-hmm. They brought her in for a reason. Mm-hmm. She didn't last long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I get it. And I was just like, 
I was like, okay, well, this is what you guys wanted me to do. And yeah. I was a terrible employee yeah. at first because yeah. I'd never worked for anybody. Yeah. You know, so like since my high school, I saw, you know, I was, I would come in late. I would miss days. I would call in sick. You know what I mean? Well, at but first, again, that's what you were doing. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. Wow. I had to be in at a certain time yeah. and I'd be like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't want to go in. You this know what I mean? This is radio though. It's radio. Yeah. But again, I don't know the difference. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It didn't, it didn't dawn on me like that. So I was just like, cause Again, I think you were hit it head on. It's like I didn't really want it anyways. Yeah. Not that I was ever looking for an excuse for them to tell me to go. Yeah. Um, I just I I'm keep, this is like real early in its inception. So this yeah. was like, you know, everything was a mess at the station. Nobody mm-hmm. knew what they were doing. Mm-hmm. It was a bunch of people that just walked in the building and just like click yeah. and we're on the air. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you well, remember when Flo it first went on the air, it yeah. was blank. It was yeah. dead air. Yeah. <laughs> like literally. So that just yeah. goes to show like what yeah. it was. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it was an amazing thing mm-hmm. in premise. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> not pa- in execution. On, on paper, yeah. it was amazing. But it was, but not in, they had the top DJs. Yeah. You know what I mean? You had the top guys in each field. Crazy. It was perfect. Mm-hmm. And from the first time when I started to get into the groove of my shows, I just fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, because again, they just let me do whatever I want. I never had a playlist. Okay. Ever. Yeah. Excuse me. I never had a playlist. Was never told what to play. Yeah. I could do whatever I want. You know what I mean? And at that time, um, it was unheard of. Yeah. Like you'd have your, you know, radio across the board or whatever. You'd have your Saturday night mix shows like, yeah. and stuff in different parts of the, not even the country because Canada didn't have yeah. anything. They had, yeah. we had Flip Out and, and Jay Swing in Vancouver. Okay. And you had the the guys in Montreal. Oh my god, I can't believe I forgot their names. <laughs> that wasn't um, um, sane. Not sane. Not no. sane. The two guys. Ah, oh, f- I'll remember. It's gonna yeah. click in my head. After. <laughs> but you know, but that was college. Okay. But Jay Swing and Flip Out were the ones doing it on on proper radio. Okay. In Vancouver. Yeah. But they were under chains. <laughs> like they yeah. had to play. You know what I mean? So at that time, it was unheard of. Yeah. And doing this every single day, yeah. I was playing club music like a club guy yeah. playing club style on radio every day crazy and it was just it was an amazing like i listen back to the mixes sometimes now yeah. and i'm like i can't believe i was doing this on radio <laughs> yeah you know like it was insane mm. um and it was a beautiful thing i think mm. again like that was another point in my life and my career that just catapulted me to a whole other level gave me so many more opportunities and you know gave me a whole new batch of followers yeah but also for me, it was just like it trained me to be a different DJ because now, you know, at the beginning, I, I, I like I said, I was playing like a club guy. Yeah. But eventually, I had to change my thinking and play smart like a radio. For guy. the radio. It took me a while. Yeah. It's not easy because you're literally taking a club guy and sticking him on the radio. And a lot of people don't know that there's a switch between playing live playing on the radio and making a CD or a mixtape or whatever. Absolutely, it's, which is why I never got into mixtapes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Never, because yeah. I'm a perfectionist and I don't, like even now, I don't like hearing myself recorded. Yeah. Okay. Um, as much, as many mixes as I've yeah. done now. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, back then, like I never got in that mixtape game with the Baby yeah. Blues and Mastermind. Those, yeah. those guys were moving ridiculous units. Uh-huh. And I could have easily. Yeah. Sold thousands and thousands and thousands. Me, as somebody that used <laughs> to sell mixtapes, that was our prime job. Mm-hmm. You don't have to tell me twice. Yeah. We had people come time and time again. Do you have scratch? Do you have certain from scratch? Do you? And it didn't exist. And I worked at Track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, you know had I mean? access to I everything. Had, I had everything. But yeah. it was just, I would try it and I, would ne- I was just never happy. Yeah. Ever. Okay. And it's like, you know, and I think the club is club. Yeah. You know what I mean? Club, I, I can get away with murder. Yeah, yeah. And it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Radio, I was getting away with murder, and it was mm-hmm. a beautiful thing. And I didn't have to answer to anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was looking at a glass, through the glass, and playing myself. I was in my own world. You know what I mean? And it was a You're great basically thing. basically back in your bedroom, but now you have an audience in your bedroom. Yeah, hundreds of thousands of people yeah. listening. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like... Um, and once it's done, it's gone. Yeah. It's out. The only person I had a recording was me or unless somebody physically pressed record. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and, and I love that feeling. Mm-hmm. One and done. Bang, bang, yeah. gone. And people never believe me. Um, they always be like, how do you plan your shows? It's like, I don't. Yeah. And they're well, like, what do you mean you don't? I would literally, 
I, I, I was the worst employee probably ever. <laughs> when my show was starting at five, I mm. lived in Brampton. Yeah. I would leave Brampton at four. Yeah. <laughs> and, and sometimes you know the I would, traffic. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes I would literally get there like 4.58. Yeah. And I have to bring crates up. I'd have to call my boy and be like, Justin, Justin Dumont saved my life so many times. Yeah. Um, I'd be like, come downstairs right now. Yeah. <laughs> and I would be like, take my crates, put them on the sidewalk, and he'd go park my car. I'd park yeah. my car and run back. And what would literally happen is, you know, someone would ask me or tell me, I'd be listening to the radio on the way down. I'd be like, and today is such and such his birthday. And I'd be like, okay, I'll do a birthday show. Yeah. That's how all that stuff started. Okay. You know, what yeah. I mean? like nothing was ever planned. It was never. It was. And I would all come in, or flag. I would come in and be listening to stuff, and I'd be like, "Oh, this song's dope." Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I'm gonna start my show with this song, yeah. and then just go from there. 